What's going on guys, Ben here and in today's video I'm bringing you some highlights of some cool demos that I've been trying in Steam's Next Fest for June 2024, the one that's currently going on right now. If you weren't aware, because I know there's a load of game announcement shows, Summer Games Fest and Xbox Game Show and all that kind of stuff, so would be forgiven for uh, not knowing that's going on, but obviously there are way over a thousand demos currently on Steam, so not enough time to try them all, but I've managed to go through and pick out 10 here from about the 30 or so that I've tried. These 10 have been ones that have stood out to me and I really like them for one reason or another. Remember, you'll be able to check any of these out. The Steam Next Fest runs from the 10th of June until the 17th of June. Some game developers might keep their demos up. That isn't uncommon. They will keep their demos up beyond the Steam Next Fest. So you can always check out the Steam page for the individual games, see if the demo's there and try it out on your own hardware. Because I would recommend that. I have tried quite a few demos where it's looked really promising. I was like, oh, this will be one I'll feature in this video. And it just kept crashing, kept having problems. This is like the perfect time to like check out some of these games. See if any games that are on your wish list have got a demo up. It's a perfect time to try them out and just see if it can run on your computer. Make sure you're also wish listing and things like that. If anything catches your eye, it really helps the devs out. But because there are so many games, if there's any that you've tried, let me know in the comments below. I'll be really interested to see because there's just not enough time to try them all. I'm sure there's going to be some titles that are absolute gold dust in there. So yeah, please do share in the comments below. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Let's jump straight in. These are the 10 games. Let's go. So again, in no particular order, we're going to start off first with The Alters. The Alters is developed by 11-Bit Studios, also published by them. And basically, you're, it's like a survival base building game. Very sci-fi. You're playing as one guy, Jan Dolsky. Basically, with the elements that you can find on the planet you're on, that's kind of the mission has all gone wrong and the rest of your crew's died, you are able to basically split your life path like your you can see your entire path and it's quite interesting actually seeing like growing up and different key moments in your life and split those off and so you then get an altar of himself where now he's like a technician or now he's a botanist or something like that and so you really get these kind of uh weird kind of situations where you're then waking up these alternate versions of yourself and then it's just a colony of yous running around and, and doing all the different stuff and so you can really then play and lean into those skills and it's really cool you've got this kind of um it's kind of like a circular base and you can actually a little bit like the XCOM games you can actually zoom out of that and you can choose where to put the different modules and like choose the elevators and stuff and so you can build the base and customize exactly how you want a little bit a little bit of jank in terms of the movement and stuff and there's a lot of invisible walls and things that you think you could step up on but you can't and things like that that, that, that does need some working on but i think the the visuals the audio the voice acting very very good it doesn't have a release date at the moment as far as i'm aware it's just set for 2024 but yeah like i said some light survival elements here action adventure probably more kind of its thing with then that kind of base building and, and kind of colony sim-esque kind of stuff it's dipping into a lot of things but kind of putting its own spin on things that's probably the best way to put it next up we have galea i, I, I think i'm saying this one right you're a small cat it's a little roguelike really really cool game a little bit like a uh, vampire survivors death must die those kind of things a really cool thing with this is that you reload by dodging so you have to be dodging it does then make the pace of the game go up a little bit because you've got to actually be aware of where you're positioning yourself but also where your dodging is going to go you're obviously invulnerable at the middle point of that dodge and stuff like that so there's a lot of cool timing and mechanics going on there worked really well for me and 18th of july it's actually planning to be released so yeah you'll be able to get your hands on this one but i would i would recommend checking this one out it's uh you like roguelikes i think i think you'll really enjoy this one Moving on, we have Thalassa, Edge of the Abyss. Now, this is a first person psychological drama. Actually, when the game opens, it says like, we're gonna be dealing with trauma and loss and grief. And if you don't wanna be vibing with that, don't play it. Like, you meant, like it's going into basically from what I can understand, a ship that we were part of the crew, but obviously the ship sunk. We're now exploring the wreckage and trying to find out why the Thalassa has sunk in the first place. Trying to like relive and find like what happened with our crewmates that have presumably all perished as well and really really cool kind of setting you're completely underwater you've got this kind of board of these different mysteries that you can then click into and as you find clues that are laying around the wreckage and everything like that you can then dra drag and drop the right clues that you think will 
add up to that mystery to then solve it and things like that and kind of piece together the mystery of what happened and why the ship actually ended up sinking. I didn't really get a lot of time to get too emotionally invested with the demo and stuff like that. It was giving me under the waves vibes with the kind of very narrative driven, but got a map of the ship, you can explore it and all that kind of stuff. It was really, really cool. And yeah, I think if you're craving a, a story like game that's going to be kind of delving into that melancholic underwater kind of stuff, then the last is going to be the one. It's actually coming out on the 1st of August 2024 at the moment as well. I'm going to say all these release dates if they're available with like an asterisk of obviously things might change, be delayed and all that kind of stuff. This next one is called Level Zero Extraction. It's a multiplayer extraction horror game, tactical FPS combat. It is dark, it is horror, it is scary, it is aliens and all that. Oh, this was actually probably one of the most tense games I'd played in a long time. You're basically just, you can match make and go in as a squad of three. You can try and go in solo and it's basically you and other teams trying to explore this facility and get loot and get out and extract. So if you're used to Hunt Showdown, if you're used to Escape from Tarkov, any of those kind of things, very, very similar in that loop. You got your stash, you got your loadout, but there's a twist. Not only are there AI aliens or zombies or undead or whatever. You can have other players come in, not as a scav, <laughs> but as an actual full-blown alien. And their, their objective is basically to just come and slaughter everyone inside. Adds a really terrifying bit of combat because obviously they're really weak to like light and very, very light sensitive. The weapons are more towards other kind of uh, mercenaries, whereas the light system and, and basically your torches and things like that are more for going against the actual uh, aliens whether that's the alien ai or the alien players very cool concept nails the atmosphere with the lighting the sound design i didn't find any issues with matchmaking or anything like that it has prox chat as well so you can jump in and start trying to survive and figure out your way out and stuff and a little bit like tarkov has certain extractions that are always open some are timed and some are some require certain things like maybe the power needs to be switched on or maybe you need to be under a certain weight level and stuff like that so some cool spins on it, clearly influenced by the others in the genre, but at the same time has added a lot of its own stuff to it. Really, really impressed with this one. Can't wait to see what they do with this. This next one is wild. It's called Striden, and it's kind of like a 5v5 sandbox looter shooter, which is kind of what it says on the tin. But it's got base building, but then kill streaks, 5v5 kind of gameplay. There's multiple squads, all squads of five and everything like that. Basically, you're trying to get all the blueprints and loot and stuff to go back to your base to then be able to upgrade it and all the while dodging radioactive storm clouds and all this kind of stuff too. Looks really nice. Plays quite nice as well. The, the, the weapon handling seemed a little bit off. It seemed really like heavy on the recoil and you're basically racing to collect 15,000 points and be the first to do that you activate radio transmitter and you get the extraction helicopter and you get out the wild thing here as well is that there are power spikes which are basically kill streaks and obviously when you die you just respawn at your base or respawn on your squad and stuff so it's kind of like a little bit like battlefield a bit like call of duty a little bit like tarkov and then you've got this kind of weird mix then and the power spikes are absolutely nuts you can just turn straight up into a radioactive bear or a moose tank you know as you do and you just start then murdering people while you've got that ability. And it's absolutely wild. You have got base building and things like that. You can get your hammer out and start like bait building stuff and building sentry turrets and stuff. Cause like, I didn't really see it in the games I played, but you can have people come and storm your stronghold and stuff. And I guess it's just good to protect it so that people can't come and loot it. Very, very cool. I'd say at the moment, there was no way to like match directly with friends. You kind of just like line up with the server and go, yep, let's click on that one and jump straight in. But you can actually just go onto the scene page request to join the play test and because they're they're letting people in in stages and like i said you can then download it and check it out it's definitely unique that's one way to put it next we have dustborn i actually actually played this live on stream the other day and kind of was vibing with it it's giving it's giving the kind of life is strange borderlands kind of combination of things here there is a little bit of kind of cringiness here as well a little bit of tongue-in-cheek stuff too but what i really like is the setting uh, of how they've like kind of set the world so basically it's kind of taken a division point that instead of instead of the sniper shooting jfk he actually shot his wife and jfk has gone on a mad one and eventually has created this whole dystopia of the united states of america or the divided states of america basically and some states that aren't even part of it now and things like that and so really gets to this alternate history kind of set in the modern day, but in a different timeline. So you're basically following Dustborn, which are a band and they're going from the West Coast all the way over into the East Coast, you know, and they've got a, I even saw on the map, there's like the Canadian 
there's the Canadian wall. I don't know if that's to keep the Canadians out, to keep the Americans out, but one way or another, it really, really cool setting. You end up getting in these kind of conversations that the demo gives you some different set pieces throughout the story. You're not really starting from scratch. It's kind of just like, hey, you're in this situation. Hey, you're in this situation. Just to give you a feel of what it's like. Um, there's a little bit of kind of like rock band-ish kind of stuff going on with uh, the music segments where you can then kind of press the buttons with timing to get the, uh, the right notes and stuff. Looked very nice, ran very nice, voice acting was good. Really nicely presented. And like I said, I, I just like the art style. It was like kind of a nice, uh, nice drawn and it reminded me of telltale like telltale games borderlands this one's coming out 20th of august 2024 so not long to go for this one as well the makers of ashen studio a44 we have flintlock now flintlock siege of dawn it says on the steam page it's a souls like i or a souls light I don't necessarily agree there, there is that kind of parrying and stuff like that i didn't struggle as much with it which uh is a good way to prove that it's not necessarily souls like because i'm terrible at those games it's it's very much more like the uh like playstation's god of war very much given that vibes very cinematic the demos in a great place good performance values voice acting is cool the story was good so far what i really liked as well is you're kind of picking up this little fox god thing and and he can help you in combat and things like that as well and it's all designed around the flintlock the flintlock firearm so obviously you'll have your normal kind of um axe that go around destroying these zombies and things like that because again the world's been overtaken by those and you'll kind of be charging up your bullets for your flintlock and your flintlock will help like stun enemies or interrupt their attacks and stuff like that just looked really nice probably gonna look at and see if i can play this one when it comes out see if i got time around when it when it does release this one's coming next month it's coming 18th of july it does have price as well it's going to be a 30 pound base game or you can get uh the deluxe edition for 33 pound that's both with 10 percent off at the moment so it's not like it's a triple a pricing or anything like that i think for that price it's definitely good it's giving kind of like like i said god of war greedful kind of god of war style of gameplay but then like a double a vibe Next one was really cool, Murfwood. It's basically medieval, darker tone of Stardew Valley. So you've basically escaped your kingdom to arrive on, on the shores of Murfwood, get put up with a with a little house in the middle of the woods. You can instantly start chopping down trees, mining stone, breaking the soil and putting your crops into the ground and everything like that. This is just a different art style of Stardew Valley. Has all the kind of people in there as well, like the different kind of fixed um, relationships you can build with the different people in the town and stuff like that. Questing and all that kind of stuff too. Combat seemed quite nice as well. And it's kind of more grounded but then with a little bit of low fantasy there is like i think a little bit of like magic and i think it's all werewolves and you know kind of mystical kind of enemies and stuff like that but for the most part you know you're there with chests and kegs and selling things to the townspeople and doing quests for them building those relationships i definitely say it's not a light-hearted game though it's, it's dealing with executions choice and consequence and stuff like that you can make choices to and increase your kind of reputation and things like that as well so you've got a little bit of the, that kind of rpg kind of role-playing elements with it as well and they kind of just let you go off and do your own thing as far as i'm aware like obviously the demo was limited with what you could do but they're not really holding your hand or anything it's just kind of right there you go you've done the prologue You've got your little kind of cottage now. You go and do what you want to do and go from there. No release date for this one. It just says Q3 2024. Again, demo is available to check out. This next one is called Heat Death and it's a sci-fi survival game, but you're on a train and you basically build an upgrade and, and survive on the train across a frozen planet. I'll have an actual let's play playthrough of this for like uh, an hour or so on the channel very soon because I actually really like this one so much. I actually then thought, well, I'm going to actually do a separate video on this and just do this one on its own. It's basically an open world survival game, but you're on the linear track of being on a train, being able to build and customize that, build your carriage and all that kind of stuff. Get more carriages, put sentry turrets on the solar panels for the power and stuff. And you're basically just going along the train track but stopping along the way to go and explore, find out why everyone's left. You basically wake up after escaping from a lab and you'll then kind of stumble across the train and you kind of just got to keep moving forward. So really interested to see how this one goes. Release date is just 2024 at the moment. No real kind of indication on this. If you're a fan of Icarus, if you're a fan of Raft or crafting games and stuff like that in general, this one may be for you. So yeah, like I said, you can download the demo and check it out. If this one's catching your interest, I will have a video up on this shortly as well for my like kind of initial playthrough that you can have a little look as well. Some of the footage you're seeing at the moment is from that's Heat Death. And I wouldn't be surprised if this does get a name change, but yeah, was pleasantly surprised by this one.
And last but not least, probably my top three, although I wasn't ranking these, but this, this one was definitely in my top three. I'll let you guess what the other two were. Dungeons of Hinterberg. I actually really like this one. You're basically a dungeon adventurer. You're armed with a sword and a Taurus book. And it's kind of like modern, but high fantasy as well. And you're exploring this Alpine village of Hinterberg. And it's very German inspired. It's got loads of like German names and German references and things like that. Mastering magic, solving puzzles, slaying monsters. And you're kind of going in and exploring these dungeons, which are kind of kind of like mini kind of puzzle puzzle rooms with a boss at the end and stuff like that. The art style is amazing. The characterization is really, really cool. And it's got a little bit of that Stardew Valley-esque side of things where there's like that social system where there's people in the town that you can then befriend or do quests for. And as you like get better relations with them, they'll then unlock like perks or skills or maybe equipment that will help you as you go and explore these and you're basically doing these dungeons to get renown to then be able to then progress further and and be a legendary kind of dungeon explorer i hope this will have steam deck support it does have controller support because i think this will be amazing on the steam deck as well just looks really really good Com combat was fun as well and just everything was cl clicking with this it felt really polished as well the release date for this is 18th of july so obviously it's coming out in just under just over a month i thought this was a very nice one and one a good one to end on as well so that's all from me thank you so much for watching obviously this is just but a snippet of the games and demos available I did try to try a broad range of different games as always and try and put a few in from different genres rather than it all just being roguelikes and survivals and things like that please let me know in the comments which games you've checked out and recommend it's really cool to see him do this remember to wishlist the games it really helps the devs out immensely and i hope you enjoyed the video remember to hit that like button drop a comment below and while you're there if you haven't already please consider hitting the subscribe button too i'll leave it there guys thank you again and i'll see you in the next video take care